Since time immemorial, we have wondered what recon unit to use. Well, let's get down to it. Sticky tap recon units are usually considered the basic recon unit. You press the button and you spit out a recon unit ahead of you in an arc. You can aim it up to send it further, or aim it down and land it closer to you. Like most everything else in the game, if you high boost or glide boost while using it, you'll boost the acceleration of the sticky recon, and that will send it further than normal. If you're hugging a building, you'll place a recon unit on it. You can also attach recon units to both allied and enemy ACs. Recon units cannot be placed in water, so on wet maps, be careful where you throw them, or they may just drown and be useless. These recon units are best used for playing attacks ahead of your advance. Try to throw them into hostile or unexplored territory to ascertain the enemy's whereabouts. You can also place them on your flanks to detect aggressors before it's too late. Many encounters in both PvE and PvP constitute what is called a search and attack. Whether you are attacking an enemy position or defending your own, it helps to set up your own sticky recon units so that you can detect the enemy in time to pivot your base of fire to meet their approach. Depending on the sticky recon you have equipped, you can have a different number of sticky recons deployed at once. Deploying a new one while you have met your maximum will cause the oldest one to fail. This applies for all recon units. Using sticky recons to scout ahead of you can help you plan whether you want to move you or your team in echelon to the left or right, or provide you with an indication of the probable enemy in position has been occupied, and by how many enemies. Use this to plan your movement up to contact with the enemy. Placing recon units along obvious terrain features, which guide AC movement, can be particularly advantageous. Some terrain features are frequent points of interest, or typical rally points for teams of ACs, so be sure to get your recon units there. Remember, recon units are not shared across your teammates, so you need to communicate any information you acquire to your friendlies. If you're the point man for your team, or doing rear guard security or bodyguard work for your fire support units, be sure especially to report detected enemies or enemy contact. In short, the RA-209 and the 321 are your obvious options in the and the 321 are your obvious options in this category. The 209 has a 250 meter detection range, and you can cast out five of them at a time. They're active for a whole minute. This recon unit is highly recommended for people who want to avoid surprise attacks. It can also be a really helpful tool for giving your operator a wide view of the battlefield to constantly monitor for enemy activity. The RA321 has higher detection range, but only slightly more than the 209. It is active for just a little over 30 seconds, and might be helpful if you're trying to detect an enemy at the edge of your range in close combat. 270 range is roughly where most fights will take place, so if you're using this recon in close range to identify the enemy's position, they may well already be upon you. If you plan on actively refreshing your recon unit frequently, this may be the best option for you. Follow type units are easy to use, but you can only throw out one at a time although they tend to have pretty good range. This type of recon unit is suitable for highly mobile ACs that need to carry recon detection into an area and don't have time to set up a network of sticky units. While these recon units tend to have good range, they have poor duration. It's entirely possible that your AC's head part will not have powerful enough scanning stats to complete a scan before your recon unit duration elapses. Particularly when using the Assetory Model 2, you will only have 3.5 seconds to actually get a scan off which the Roland can barely do. While I do like this recon unit, I find that I no longer use it because unlike the sticky type, it actively gives away your position since it follows you right above your head. The little blue recon unit hovering above your AC's head is a dead giveaway and can be visible behind cover, although this may not be really much of an issue since this is a game with wall hacks and they can just scan you and see you anyways. However, you can spot this giveaway outside of scan mode and that may be reason enough not to use it. As for your options, technically you can get a full 10 minutes of nearly uninterrupted recon unit coverage by throwing up 30 of the Asatori Model 1 throughout the course of a game. Given that most fights only last 5 minutes, however, you generally will not have much trouble maintaining a constant recon coverage of your immediate surroundings. The Model 2, meanwhile, has an incredibly short duration, making it difficult to achieve a scan with unless you have a dedicated recon head. It is, however, very helpful for identifying the enemy's position, and with a detection range of 500 meters, it's rather effective at identifying enemy targets. The Model 3 has the longest duration, but that's still only 35 seconds. So generally speaking, if you have a core that hasn't got a lot of recon units, give this one some thought. The third type of recon unit is the floating, or hover type, which hovers in place in the area it is deployed. 
These recon units behave like follow types, in that they shoot straight up, but they don't follow your AC. They deploy right in the air above your AC, and they remain there. You can deploy several of them at once, as many as eight, and they have a very long duration. These recons cannot be used quite as aggressively as stickies, or follow type recons, but they can cover a massive area if you deploy them with some forethought. Whether you deploy them methodically, or out of habit as you traverse the map, you will gradually develop a significant network of recon units. This will, as a general rule, help you keep track of what's happening on the map. Since these functions similar to a cross between a sticky and a follow type, the hover type recon can be used like both types, though it's least effective on very large maps because it cannot help you scout forwards, only scout where your AC currently is and was. There's only two options for hover types in this category. The Rec 7 has the capability for a whopping eight simultaneous recon units at once, and both recon units last a really generous two and a half minutes. So if you seldom use recon units, these will easily last you the whole duration of the match. The Rex 13, meanwhile, is the recon unit that I use personally, and I like it the most. 320 detection range is entirely suitable for most situations, and you can throw up five of them at once. Given that they last two and a half minutes, you can spit them out whenever you arrive at a new location and largely forget about them. Your small Wi-Fi network of recon units will cover your back as you move forwards. And if you have time, while you're pulling security for your team, you can set up a pretty generous early warning system that will let you know where enemy units are when they get close to your position. So, these are the options available to you. However, I'd like to end this video without passing harsh judgment in favor of or against any of these options. In summary, follow types have good range, hover types have the most duration, and you can also set a bunch of them, and stickies, lastly, are probably the most useful for actually scouting ahead of your position. Establishing which one is best for your circumstances or for your AC will be up to you. However, I will tell you what the best recon unit is. It is the fourth hidden recon unit, which is your fucking eyeballs. You see, as the match begins, sometimes you'll be able to see the enemy right across from your position, but sometimes you won't and you'll have to find him. Enter visual reconnaissance. Recon units often don't reach far enough away to actually scout the entire map for you, and if you're using stickies, you've really got to cast them out in the right directions and aim pretty well in order to find the enemy. Generally speaking, you'll be relying on sight alone to identify targets. What's very important about the reconnaissance phase, as I'm going to call it, is that you don't want to give away your position, at least not typically. Sometimes you do want your opponent to see you and come to you, but that's sometimes the exception. Assuming you want to spot the enemy first, and then plan your attack while he's unaware that you've spotted him, there's a couple things you can do. The easiest time to spot an enemy AC is while it is moving. A moving AC is easy to pick out among the static backdrop of the map. That goes for you too. If you don't want to be seen, hold still. Additionally, ACs that are skylined or silhouetted against the sky are pretty easy to spot, even against extremely dark skyboxes on maps like Pask Field Night. Many 5th gen players also instinctively climb the closest building after spotting in. This is both to give them the best defensive position and also to give them a better line of sight to identify where their targets could be. If your opponent is looking for you, it may actually be advantageous not to climb. On a map that's quite small or has very close fixed spawns, you may also just skip the recon phase entirely and attack the assumed location of the enemy position, guns blazing. This will often catch them by surprise, since many people are expecting a short reconnaissance phase where they get a scan off. If they're unable to do that, they may not actually have the weapons appropriate to fight you head-on at the start of the fight. If you were to do this, though, you'd probably be missing out on some important information about your enemy's AC that you might have been able to do just by sight alone. Always consider the information that you can get about your opponent from just a quick glance. Do they have a shield? What kind? Is it deployed in the bay? Are they a biped? A reverse joint? Tetrapod? Tank? You can determine most of these things without actually scanning your opponent. Are they running variable arms for dual shoulder? Are they carrying strex? Are they running shock pulls? Will they probably have more IP than you? Your ability to answer these questions may actually override your need to ever scan your opponent, which will make a difference in terms of which recon units you choose to use. Do you want to primarily track the enemy, or do you really want to go for that scan? Even if you don't plan on intentionally scanning your enemy, just using recon units for the wall hacks is still worth doing if you're fighting each other from close positions. Most AC fights take place pretty close, and being able to tell that your enemy is behind the building that you're next to is pretty important work. That said, even past the recon phase of the match, once you've made contact with the enemy and you're engaged, you'll still want to pay attention to what they're doing, and you can get game-winning information just by closely following the state of the equipment on their AC, which you can do with your eyes without having to scan. 
Remember, many defensive heads will actually lack the scanning speed to make use of scan functions. So if the fight is hectic, don't feel pressured to scan the enemy when you need to be returning fire. If you shoot the enemy and it says ineffective, change your weapons. Try to deduce what they're weak to by process of elimination. If you're using snipers, for example, and the shot is ineffective, you're probably shooting a KE shield. That is something you should be able to identify just with the enemy's silhouette. You can verify that, for example, by seeing their AC move in scan mode and with wall hacks providing contrast for you to see their AC silhouette while it's highlighted. A shield will stick out like a sore thumb. Personally, my thought process after the recon phase or during it is usually, how do I most effectively attack this guy, followed by how do I not eat shit and die? If you're close enough to see the enemy clearly when you engage him, you can often determine what he's got to hit you with, without even being shot at. Many players will go guns, guns, guns the moment you're inside the reticle, so you can actually deduce what they have based on whether lasers, shotgun pellets, BR fire, or whatever is coming near your AC. Now, if that unaimed fire is actually hitting you, and you are not just moving in a straight line at your opponent, that's good information. That means that your enemy might have subcomputers. Likewise, if missiles are flying towards you, that's helpful to know. Be careful about testing what your opponent has by baiting it out with your body, or face checking. Many strategies in this game may revolve around bluffing that you have certain equipment out and active. Would you, for example, like to rush a position if you knew they were charging two Kurosawas? Are you going to be willing to fight a prolonged engagement if you know the enemy has a large missile? Bluffs are no good if you're scanned, and some of those are pretty obvious win conditions, so if you don't end up scanning the enemy, you may not be privy to that information. For example, if the Strakosas coming at you from that heavyweight AC are not locking on very quickly, and you haven't seen any other missile, you can assume a large missile. Speaking of wind conditions, if your only defense against an enemy AC is a TE shield, that is, in order to fulfill that how do I not eat shit and die aspect of your game plan, you're going to need that shield out. And that means that your opponent's objective will be pretty clear. It's he's going to want to kill that shield. Which means that your wind condition is to keep that shield alive. Enter the shield dance, managing your recon units so you can tell what your opponent is using, and whether they have a shield out, or whether they can break your shield, is a pretty key aspect of VD combat. You won't always have the chance to fully scan them to see what they have equipped, and if you stay out of combat to scan them, they'll oftentimes be given time to scan you. Let's think about this in terms of TE shield situations a little bit more. Say you're a solid quad, your opponent's got shot pulls. They will eventually pop your TE shield with the shotgun, and the pulse gun is going to mess you up after that happens. But since you have a high AP, and in order to, for them to kill you before you kill them, they really want to pump double pulse gun fire on you ASAP. Maybe the smart thing to do for them is to use shot pulse, because the shotgun will still chip through your shield, but because you can retaliate with a KRSW and HSM, this is going to be a trade that you probably win, especially because you're not taking AP damage while you have the shield out. So understanding that situation, your opponent may try to save their energy and flank around your shield in order to hit you effectively with the pulse and then eventually bring you down. Or they may use both shotguns in order to try to break that TE shield faster. Well, if you see that dork whip out two shotguns, put the fucking shield away, numbskull! The shield remains vulnerable while you're swapping it out, so the earlier you recognize what's about to shoot you, the better. This goes double for him switching weapons. If you see he's got two pulses out, you're probably not going to have time to whip that shield back out. So keeping track of what they have out, and seeing in scan mode when they switch weapons is going to indicate for you what The shield remains vulnerable while you're swapping it out, so the earlier you recognize what's about to shoot you, the better. This goes double for him switching weapons. If you see he's got two pulses out, you're probably not going to have time to whip that shield back out. So keeping track of what they have out, and Seeing in scan mode when they switch weapons is going to indicate for you when you need to swap the shield out. This is usually called cycling the shield. The importance of this kind of interaction is amplified significantly if we consider other situations with different shields. Shot pulse, because it's a shotgun and a pulse gun, will eventually defeat a TE shield because it has two separate attacking damage types to whittle away at it. But like Zlatko, shotgun, VTF, even auto cannon fire against a KE shield is generally not going to get you anywhere. Similarly, Battle rifles bounce off CE shields, but both CE and KE shields can fold fast to pulse guns or the occasional hit from another effective weapon, like a battle rifle or a rifle, depending on the shield. So, turns out, using your eyeballs is required and rewarding. You oftentimes really want to know what your opponent is about to try to shoot you with, so you can preempt their attack and reduce their advantage. Many newer players will make the mistake of spawning him with a shield equipped, and then engage the enemy without identifying what will hit them. This can potentially lose them a game-winning shield. Even worse, some players, including myself, really, I'm guilty of this too, will purge their bays before checking their opponent for shields. 
You are smarter than that. Be smarter than that. Use your eyeballs. Use the resources available to help you make smart choices. Now, go apply what you've learned. If you didn't learn shit, then let me know in the comments section. If you did learn something, let me know what was the most valuable element that you picked up. I'll try to do better next time. Thanks for watching.